Well, welcome again to the latest edition of the latest Shining Podcast. This is Steven Spector with Rob Hirschfeld from uh, Rack Ann again. Hello, everybody. Well, I hope everyone's doing good. And, uh, you know, one of the really exciting things happens, uh, especially with open source communities, is when you launch a new version of the product. And uh, today, Digital Rebar Provision 3.1, I think is what it is, is yes. launched. And you always have to have numbers and everything to confuse people. Semver, we love Semver. So, uh, semantic version. So, so congratulations. So, let's talk about what's in this new version. What changed? Lots of things to do. And in the end, we're going to send everyone out to go get the code and try it, obviously. But, but let's start with you know the most what's important thing. Release the mascot. Yeah. Well, the mascot, <laughs> yes, and 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 we. I, we are very close to the mascot name. If you haven't seen the Digital Rebar mascot, I encourage you to go out to rebar.digital. Our bare metal bear. The bare metal bear. And we have a vote going on, but there's some underground behind the scene names coming in as well. But uh, besides the mascot, which of course in open source is probably the most important issue, um, the number two issue is what's actually in the technology. Oh, that. Just that small thing. So. Um, Digital Rebar Provision is the gen third generation uh, going back all the way to the Crowbar days. Um, and uh, in May, May 4th actually, we came out with the 3.0 version of Provision, which was is really uh, just net network provision. And the 3.0 product was, was our, our sort of attempt to say, look, if you just want to boot machines and get rid of Cobbler, mm -hmm. we're going to give you, you know, cloud native RESTful endpoints and really nice templating system, very clean and simple. Uh, and we looked at that and we were really excited. So 3.0 uh, got some, some initial interest. We got some people excited about how we were doing templates and things like that. And uh, that led us to really look at what we could do with just that simple tool and how we could make it, you know, actually replace 90% of the functionality that the full Rebar V2 system had. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a lot of what you'll see in 3.1. But let me be specific. So in 3.1, we took this idea of composable operations, it's one of our favorite themes, uh, and we had taken 3.0 and been decomposing boot env, boot scripts, uh, provisioning actions, all these things into templates and then templates inside of templates. So it was super easy to, to take a whole provisioning infrastructure and then reuse pieces across the board. And from that, we said, wow, this is really getting hard. We built a content system, what I like to call bundling. Um, and we made it so that you can take uh, those you know, composable pieces, store them all together into a unit, and then uh, download them as a single piece. And then really importantly, we, we added this layered configuration management system, which means that you can take content and you can drop it into a DRP endpoint, digital rebar provision endpoint, as a read-only set. So you can manage the content and nobody in that endpoint can write, overwrite it or change it which means that you can then have a continuous integration process, you can provision. So you can always update a content bundle and it'll fix everything in that, in that content, but nobody's changed it. So you can continue. So if you have a thousand endpoints, this is the way we think. Right. If I have a thousand endpoints, like one in every top of rack switch, um, so I could provision locally, then I can distribute the same content bundle to every one of those switches um, in a very consistent, reliable way, and I can be certain that nobody, I'm not breaking somebody's, you know, taken my CentOS deployment and added a new task because it's locked. Is it like a golden image kind of concept? It sort of is. It's, yeah. it's um, it, it allows us to then know exactly how things are changed and be, and when you get content from rack in, what you're doing is you're guaranteed that that content's going to be reusable and repeatable, right? We, we know that if we give you something that's tested, that it's going to be reliable. Um, so that's, that's a really big feature. Um, it's, it's a tremendous add for us. Um, there's a lot of complexity and things we had to work out from that. So the content bundling is a big piece, uh, along with the decomposition of the tasks. Um, Another big thing that we've added into the, the 3.1, besides just some general manageability, like version, getting to know the versions, mm -hmm. um, we have some tweaks around subnetting that you can leave a subnet on and turn it on and off. Um, we added a um, job system. So there's actually something called a stage in there. And this is something that Rackin has been building a lot of workflows around and a lot of tooling around where it can actually manage a workflow going stage to stage to stage. And there's a job system and a queuing system. 
uh, where the control process for that actually uses the digital rebar client um, to drive that process. So from that perspective, um, I can do really pretty advanced workflows. This is a rack end, something rack end's been spending a lot of time doing, you, you know, and we'll do be, we'll be doing some demos about that. Um, it's sort of hard to explain right now, so you don't see it as much in the community pieces. Um, but the APIs are all there, and it's it's part of the infrastructure. Um, there's some pieces here. I'm trying to remember all the all the amazing That's stuff. That's okay. I, I wanted to hit on um, one of the things I think is important here is is that digital rebar provision has is it's almost um, you use the word scaffolding mm -hmm. as you used a lot, and then this idea that they'll be within DRP, there'll be uh, pieces that come from the open source community. There'll be pieces, or I guess you call them bundles or packages, that will be written directly by the community. They'll be written by people in the community that want to share them or build their own. And at the same time, RackN will provide some packages or content bundles as well. Can, can you kind of explain how that's going to work so everyone gets an idea of where DRP stops, where RackN starts, and, and how, you know, sure. you know, obviously, you know, RackN is going to sell products, but you're still able to use digital rebar provision on your own with community share, it's gonna be a typical open source group. It's an open source project, um, and it's the underpinning of everything we're doing. Yeah. So, and we're actually pulling some things out of community that we felt weren't appropriate to have in the open source project. Um, and then some of those things move into the community, into repos around the community. Mm -hmm. uh, in 3.1, uh, Digital Rebar, the Go language program, and the CLI is really a scaffolding. There is no content in it. It does not install operating systems by default. It doesn't have operating systems, uh, ISOs. Everything is, the design of Digital Rebar provision is it's a standalone service. It doesn't require any tethering to the internet or remote management, right? We felt that was very important. We hear from people, that's what they want. They don't want some back door where it goes out to the internet and downloads things. You push all the content that you need into Digital Rebar. So it really starts as the shell or scaffolding. And then you make choices as an operator what you want to put into that, that shell. Um, and for us, that even included taking the, the pretty minimal UI that we had in there. We didn't want bugs in the UI to force people to update the service. The service should be durable. And so the UI got pulled out, Rackens uh, pulled that out, and we offer a, um, a SaaS version of the, the UI that we run for community users um, and for Rackin page users, of course. And then um, same thing is true with like uh, Linux, uh, standard Linux distros. There's some plugins where you can take um, like out of band management actions. Some of those things we um, actually all the plugins uh, we've been managing as rack end resources because they require interfaces to proprietary pieces. Mm -hmm. um, some of them we make just freely available for, for rack end users uh, without any charge. Some of them are, are obviously per fee things. But the idea here is that the, the scaffolding itself is really an empty shell that provides APIs and services. And then the content, um, what we would call a downloadable package, um, is going to have the boot environments, how to install things, um, you know, how to do like uh, di direct disk imaging or backend Terraform. Um, all of those pieces are really added content around the system. And the nice thing about that is that if I am an operator, I don't need any tethering. I don't need any reliance on anybody else. I can take, build my own templates. I can copy them. I can take advantage of all these pieces and just run it. Um, and I can intermingle it with rack and components, rack and pieces, um, and sort of pick and choose where I want to be custom and site specific, where I want to be community only, or where I want to bring in some rack and uh, value added pieces. And then like any community, you know, if you build something for an operator, you build it, you can go back to the digital rebar community and share it right. with everyone else. So, it, it, you know, there will be rack and pieces you can go and purchase or use, and then the community will have all of them. So I think, you know, one of the things that stands out in my mind is you know you have the scaffolding and there's going to be three packages that can be in there. There's the community packages, there's the custom built packages, and the rack end packages. And so I think that's really important for people to understand so they know, because I know all open source people, we all get crazy, where's the line? So I think you've done a really nice job of showing people this. And, and we've intentionally allowed you to co-mingle, yeah. right? Because what we don't want to have happen, and I saw this with Chef and Puppet and mm -hmm. Ansible, People build a, a, a you know, Kubernetes installer and then they fork it and they make changes all over it and they can't share their changes, they can't keep up with the community. 
the composable design that we have means that you can bring in some rack and pieces and, and tasks or jobs or you know that you think are important and you don't want to own like Raiden BIOS configuration or burn in those are those are standard you don't need to create custom ones mm -hmm. and so those types of things you can mix inside of a bigger story and that's that to me is it's it's a hybrid mix with proprietary and open but if that makes it easier to share what you've done and reuse components then it's actually a much more open model mm -hmm. than saying oh it's either everything I do is open or everything I do is proprietary because in our experience with ops operators do their own custom stuff and they don't want to share it they don't need to share it it doesn't help anybody but some of the things they do they want to get out there because it's re, you know there's, there's no value in, right. in custom and this model the way we did it very specifically is designed to encourage sharing as much as possible yeah and I, reusing code yeah so you know I encourage with the new launch of uh, digital rebar provision 31 if you're listening uh, you're an operator you want to go see it go out to rebar.digital and uh, you know grab the code there's some steps out there there'll be some videos up there as well on YouTube and we'll make it all accessible and, and we'll have official uh, release notes and yeah the, so if you want the all the details the things I forgot it, it, it'll be there but you know we wanted to highlight this so you know big big shout out and congrats to the digital rebar community Thank you. That, you know now they have the cool looking bear and I've seen the stickers which are good and you know sometime after this podcast goes out the bear will get its official name and uh, we just don't want to say it because we still have the vote on and so we're trying to figure it out but that's coming and and uh, you know then it's fully operational open source project and, and it's worth saying if you haven't tried it out you could have tried it and been provisioning systems faster than listening to this podcast even at 2x speed so just go try it it's yeah, give it, really not hard it, give it a try it, it, it's pretty simple and and i think the concept of how you organize between the rack and the stack uh, between the rack and the, and the system makes great sense we've been trying thank great, you. great thanks again rob appreciate it